Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're so glad to welcome you as part of our community tonight. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and distributed live stream. By entering this virtual meeting room, you give your consent to be recorded and distributed by Simeon Morrow and other third parties. If you prefer to not be recorded, please turn off your camera and microphone and or go to the Facebook live video feed, the link to which I will now place in the chat room. For a better experience, please turn off your microphone and set your video to gallery view. Tonight, our featured guests are Jolt Nagy, a conductor and alumnus of the Liszt Ferenc Academy of Music, who joins us from Karlsruhe, Germany, and Laszlo Maroshi, a conductor and alumnus of the Liszt Ferenc Academy of Music, who joins us from Orlando, Florida. We are also pleased to be joined by Professor Lino Rivera of St. Mary's College of California. Jolt, welcome. Good evening, good morning. I don't know from, from everybody. <laughs> Hi. Jolt, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself, about uh, the work you do, and uh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I would like that you forgive my English, my strong Hungarian accent. And uh, well, I'm Jolt Nagy. I am I am a conductor. I was born and uh, grew up in Hungary. And um, after the, my studies, I spent uh, the my, my life in different countries, but I'm living since uh, 1992 in Germany. And um, I am a freelance conductor, just now. I have been uh, um, head of the opera um, school in Karlsruhe for seven years and uh, for 12 years in Paris Conservatoire Superior. Um, just know I am freelance conductor and I'm working okay. on three or four continents. Okay, let's hear a uh, recording with the BBC Symphony of Jolt conducting Bartok. Okay, hey, Laszlo, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Good morning in California, I guess. <laughs> it's still before lunchtime, so probably you will need a sandwich very soon. So it's very nice to see you all joining us, and I am very thankful for Jordan and Simon to invite me to this show. And what can I say? I started conducting in the kindergarten when I was five years old. I organized the choir for my <laughs> mates and, and 
we did exactly what the Leonin and Perotin did with the Gregorian plans, singing a melody. And I asked half of the chorus, hold the last note. And the <laughs> other half of the group start the next line. And I didn't know what I was doing, but we all liked it. So after I learned the piano and the trombone and singing and became a military band conductor. And I didn't like that I needed to conduct for dead people. You know, the job was to play in funerals. And I always said, why do I have to conduct for dead people? Dead people don't listen to music. Can we do concerts for people who are alive? And this is how these old repertoire that you will show the, the, the unique parts that like the Liszt mass and, and the Wagner medley that nobody ever touched before. These are got to my attention to focus on that. And after I wanted to prove because people started to put me in a box. Oh, he's, a, he's only a wind conductor. And I said, wait a second. What is this only a wind? A conductor is a conductor. If you know the score, you know what you want to hear, you can do that. Whatever group you work with, you just have to know what you are doing and whom you are working with. So I started to work with symphony orchestras also since 1983. Mozart symphonies in Hungary and and opera the theater in Budapest. And when I came to the States, uh, I did both band and orchestra conducting. And after I accepted an orchestra conducting job, just to prove that I am not only a wind conductor, I am a conductor who loves to work whoever I can and do the best out of them. Maybe this is fantastic. In, in briefly, yes. briefly, very briefly. Yes. Let's very hear brief. Laszlo conducting <laughs> list with the Ferns List Academy of Music Symphonic Band. Fantastic. So I'd like to begin a discussion with you two about what this means, this term Hungarian, like we said. So Jolt, let's begin with you. What did uh, it mean to be Hungarian as you were growing up? And what did Hungarian music mean to you? Was it Bartok, like the recording we heard from the BBC Symphony? Um, at the beginning, it didn't mean anything because <laughs> when you grew up as a child, uh, this is the normal, this is normal thing. Uh, I grew up, in fact, uh, with Bartók, because the very beginning I started to play Bartók in the music school, the elementary school. 
and um, of course for for children and later microcosmos and only after Bartok came Bach and uh, other composers. Um, really to, to to be sure about it that I'm really Hungarian and my my uh, my um, it it came when I when I lived in in Abbey Road. They have been in different countries because I recognize how different difficulties and how different is the, the way how people play music. Because in Hungary, the, the main point is the chamber music. Um, if something is very strong in the education, this is the chamber music. And um, probably the most famous conductors and the musicians whom we know uh, with a big career. Uh, they made really good orchestras because of the chamber music was very well taught in, in the in Hungarian schools. So for me, this this means uh, Hungarian roots. Let's say chamber music. Wow, chamber music. Up to the chamber music. Uh, I don't know, Laszlo. What do you think about it? Well, with the chamber music, what you said, I just have to agree in both the vocal, both instrumental level because in, in in instrumental chamber music the string quartet and the uh, woodwind quintet and the brass success sextets and quintets later they became extremely popular but the, if if i if i'm asked to join to the question that uh, simon asked at the beginning what does it mean uh, the hungarian music is growing up in hungary i have to tell you what what joel said in the keyboard education we went through in the same process the the, the little Czerny etudes, after the little Bach preludes, and after the Bartók educational keyboard pieces, the microcosmos and the children collections. And the, 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 what, what was Hungarian music? I was always falling asleep, but for my father was playing the piano, and he always played something Hungarian because he was singing in Hungarian. So I didn't even know that it's not uh, that it, there is music other than Hungarian. I didn't even know that, that that not Hungary is the only nation in the world because everything was Hungarian around me. And after I learned that there are the gypsies who play something they call this Hungarian. After we learned that the Chardash is an ancient Hungarian. After we learned, no, 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 they, they don't know. Well, the pentatonic music that Bartók and Kodai found in, in Transylvania and, and countryside, those are the ancient Hungarian music. So it's a huge scale of a musical world that we can call as Hungarian music, because we know Hungarians came from Asia. So they brought the, 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 the pentatonic scale with them from Asia. But same, the, the Western side of the United States, the native Indians, they went from Asia there too, because they have the pentatonic scale in their folk music too. So the, what is the Hungarian part of it? Very, very good question. Uh, may, I, may, I, may I say something to this? Uh, yes, of Lassie. course. Um, there is something about people think that, that this is Hungarian, but this is not Hungarian at all. <laughs> For example, the most uh, famous pieces of Brahms are the Hungarian dances, which music is uh, not really Hungarian. This is from the 1860s, 70s. They are composed uh, uh, pieces for uh, um, Steigeiger, so, so a, a violin player, and, and, and a gypsy band. And later, of course, people listen to this, but your, the, your shows has a motto, and this is Liszt. Do you know the story that uh, Liszt didn't speak uh, Hungarian, which was in the 19th century absolutely normal because the, the folk didn't speak the, uh, uh, I mean, the folk spoke the Hungarian, but the feudal lords and the, the higher class didn't Aristocrat. because everything what they had to had to manage, you know, in the in the city hall or or in the church, they had to manage it in Latin or in German. And but in the 19th century, it was absolutely normal. Smetana uh, didn't speak really Czech; he had to learn Czech. Uh, Sibelius had to learn uh, Finnish because his mother language was Swedish. Uh, Franz Kafka didn't speak Czech. He, he wrote and, 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 uh, and spoke German, but lived in Prague. So it was uh, absolutely normal. And when Liszt first time heard really Hungarian music, and this was folk music, because before that he heard only 
called Hungarian music, which was in fact gypsy music. And uh, one evening, I think it was in Marton Vashar, uh, there was a dinner. And after the dinner, they went out for a cigar and for a cognac on the balcony. And outside, far away, there was a, a farmer group by open fire. And they sung Hungarian music. And this touched so much Liszt that he started to, to, to look for it. What means Hungarian? Because for him, it was also not clear because his mother language was German, in fact. And he never learned, uh, learned uh, really Hungarian. And um, um, something is very important. When 1890, uh, Gustav Mahler was the music director of the Hungarian State Opera House. He wanted all the operas in Hungarian that the people can understand the, the opera. He didn't speak one single word Hungarian, but he insisted to conduct all the operas in Hungarian. Because in the end of the 19th century, or the third third of the uh, 19th century, there was a very strong motion to, to look for the, the national origin of the country. OK. Um so thank you for that review. Can I would like to continue with Laszlo, please, with our next question. What did it mean to you to be admitted to the Liszt Ferenc Academy of Music? Well, it was it was like like heaven of music studying. It was like going to the Valhalla if we talk about the Wagner and Liszt, like like going to to the top of the possible challenges in music education. And uh, the education system uh, based on, on the modeling uh, practice list plays the standards so high because he was playing and showing them this is how we play the piano and everyone wanted to play the piano like him and the string education Hubei just joined to this with the violin and after the string education became extremely high and those people who were, who were teaching there, they established very high standards. So to get to the Liszt Academy, it was a big pressure and a lot of stress. Can I, can I, be, am I good enough for these guys? Can I work hard enough to be accepted and, and, and graduate from here? And it actually, the, 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 the negative, it was not a negative pressure. It became a positive support to be challenged uh, to be measured by the measurements, what Liszt and Hubei, uh, two extremely famous and very high standard musicians, established. Just think about the transcendent studies by Liszt. Still today, very few pianists can play those. And he said, "Yeah, just do like this. Yeah, just do like that." But uh, we, we need a uh, somebody needs genetic surgeons uh, to change them to be able to do that. And not enough just to practice. You need talent too. And oh. I'm talking to the uh, with this sentence to a lots of music educators who forget that that you need talent too. It, it, it's not like uh, producing cars in a factory. Uh, the art education is a little bit different. Yeah. yeah so well, can you tell us? And I loved every minute, and I was very spoiled having professors. Just let me tell you, do, do, do I have a minute for that? Um, well, can you tell us just about your, the admissions process? The first process? conducting lesson in the Liszt Academy. Can I tell you about the standards? We agreed that for the first lesson, I will bring Beethoven Egmont Overture. OK, I needed to write a piano score by hand. There was no Sibelius and Finale program at that time. So I wrote by hand the entire overture for piano. A lady was playing it. And I go to the, the first conducting lesson. I stand on the podium next to the piano, open the score. Professor watches me and asks me, what, what is that? I said, this is the score. Why is it there? Did you know where we are? You don't know the piece from memory. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> this was the first lesson <laughs> on the list academy. Bye. Come back when you know what you are doing. And I asked him, and, and how can I learn a score? I have never learned a score. It's your problem. Go home and figure it out. <laughs> Lots of pressure. And Lazo, you, uh, you were admitted by playing piano, what was that like? What were, when you applied, did you apply for conducting well, or how did it, that work? It was a very complex issue because it, 
I, the, my parents were educators and Hungary was on their socialist uh, regime belonging to the Russian Soviet Union uh, part, East Europe. So educators, teachers were uh, the, no, uh, the bad guys in the society, the enemy of the society. So they were very poorly paid and their offsprings never got a good job. They needed to prove that they support the peasant and labor parties uh, concept of, of music. So my father find the, the possibility to send me to the capital to a military music high school when the military paid for everything and they didn't ask who the parents are. So this was a big, big attraction. So I went there and when, when I finished with the high school, suddenly the army said, we need conductors. I have a, a, a performance degree in trombone and piano, both. But in the Liszt Academy, the, the army said, we will pay everything, we need conductors. We pay for that too. So I didn't even finish with high school. I, I was already in the Liszt Academy and, and I started the, the conducting. I continued the piano and the trombone. So I have three degrees from them. Wow. Joel, tell us a little bit about your experience. What was I'm it? I'm very like happy that, that, that last though, for last though, this was the, the heaven. For me, it was the hell. <laughs> <laughs> because I had to work so much, it was uh, I can say almost the same, uh, except that I didn't play the trombone, but uh, I we had to play the piano, of course, and I played flute and um, and I started percussion and also trumpet uh, during this time, but uh, and I played also a little bit the double bass, of course, but uh, this was the 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 main idea that. Uh, each instrumental group we should touch on somehow and to know what is possible, what is not possible, because this for a conductor so important to, to, to recognize immediately uh, if uh, the problem is the piece, the player, the instrumentation, and, and, and so on. And um, so I remember that I didn't sleep so much for three years at least, because as Laszlo mentioned, there was no copy machine. So we had to conduct their own instrumentation, but we had to write all the parts also. And I remember that we didn't sleep whole night because we helped to each other with Laszlo even uh, to, to, to copy the parts and to write for each other because the day after we had the rehearsal already. And uh, I can also say the same that uh, we had a different professor, in fact, not the same with Laszlo, but uh, the same, process there was no score you had to know from memory the bar numbers also wow so, so it have... was it was well as, as i told you at the beginning it was the hell but with with a little bit time and practicing uh, you it was a normal way to to adopt new music i mean new scores and to learn them uh, quite well wow. okay so we have a question from Lino, Professor Lino Rivera of St. Mary's College of California. Lino, hi. Hello. Uh, it's a pleasure. Nice to meet you on the air. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you, Laszlo and Zolt. Um, I have a question for both of you, and especially to Laszlo, uh, regarding the uh, education, because we are you know, in the business of educating young musicians. Um, I would say, you know, with your experience that, you know, that your professor says, oh, if you don't know the music uh, uh, and the score by memory, come back next week. Uh, but I find that we cannot do that in uh, our mo modern education system. We have to somehow uh, teach our students how to learn the score. You can't just send, send the student on and say, learn the score on your own. Um, so what what do you do when a student, especially a talented student, uh, says that and we got to give them a guideline, a, a, a process as to how to learn the music? May I say something before Laszlo? Uh, you have to understand something, uh, a big, big difference. Because of the Western or all over the world just now, the education system is based on amount of, of students. In Hungary, it was uh, a big, big privilege to get into the class. And uh, from hundreds of people, we were chosen. And I remember that in the class from Laszlo, there was one guy who was accepted, but in six weeks, he was already out of the school. He was kicked out because this was a socialistic system. Everything was paid by the, by the state. 
today, uh, probably on your university where you are teaching, you get money from the students. They pay for it. It's a completely different issue. So you cannot, cannot compare it. And of course, today, if I would send home a student because it is not prepared, at least I would be a racist. You know? it's, it's a completely different world. That time, we had to do everything that we are, we are accepted. Okay. And we had to had had to had to manage equality. Otherwise, we flow out immediately from the school. I understand because your question, and it's a very sensitive question. And actually, it's very critical question today when you have in a conducting class thirty students and you have to teach them. Otherwise, you will be sued that you don't teach them the conducting. So you are a bad teacher. But just just let me tell you a story that will we'll link together what George just said and your question. Two years ago, I worked with the Queen's Band of Denmark in Copenhagen. And after the first rehearsal, the musicians came to me and they told me, oh, Laszlo, we really love that you represent the old school of conducting. Old school of conducting? What is that? <laughs> I had no clue what he was talking about. So I gave a call to Jolt and I asked him, Jolt, what are they talking about? What is old school? And he said, Laszlo, the old school is who still knows the score. And I think this is the link to your question that uh, you are right. We, we can't just uh, send students home that figure it out. They, they are very busy with hundreds of other, other things. Like they won't figure it out because they don't know. They put a recording on, stare the, uh, notation and they come up with something but but will they know the music or they became a copy of somebody uh, is the is the personality important or not and and if they, uh, i would go back to the basic idea of conducting that you have to have a sound picture in your mind that you want to hear and not somebody else's the resource should be the score the composer and after you can build up your other the, the examples, listen to others and find out which one is the closest to you and choose your uh, the solution. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it was very shocking for me when instead of learning score, I saw here in a class when they called a score preparation. And the score preparation meant, don't worry about the score, just highlight with a highlighter the most important musical material. Here's the melody, now the bass, now the percussion, now the flute. And the, the problem with this is, here's a sentence. The more you know, the more you hear. If they highlight certain material, this is the only thing that they will know from the piece and they won't even hear what the other instruments will do because they focus on the trumpet because now the trumpet is the most important or most dominating uh, material. So okay. the question is a critical question and a very good question. May, so I, may I say... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we need, we need to move on at this moment. I'm sorry. Um, okay. uh, Laszlo uh, has some fan fans writing on Facebook. Susan, Susan Davidson writes, Hi, Dr. Morosi. Lydia Roca, Udfuslet Segedroy Drill, Lazi, which is my best Hungarian pronunciation. And then Autoro Mercado Vasquez writes, Saludos, Maestro Laszlo, Venete Gardos, Udfuslet Maestro Laszlo Maroshi. Arturo is from Lima, then this jacket is from. <laughs> it's funny. Fantastic. So um, now let's take a look at what Jolt did after leaving the after leaving the sorry where's my leaving the academy list academy here he is
So Jolt, tell us about how you got to Paris. Tell us a little bit about this video we just saw. Uh, and... Lino, Lino asked me something. He would like to hear uh, what I wanted to say to this education. Uh, I never sent home any students in my life. Uh, I have my, my uh, arthritic that we have, I have to help on that level where the student is. But I tell you a very, very sad story. Uh, when I took over the class in Paris, I was the only one pro uh, professor on you know, the highest level in, in France as a professor in conducting. And there was a student whom I took over from my uh, former colleague. And uh, uh, how can I say it? Uh, I tried to change things. I was not happy with him, but he was very strong. He decided alone what he would like to conduct for the diploma concert. And in the Paris Conservatory, uh, the professor is not in the jury. There is an invited jury, five members from all over the country, professionals, really professionals, uh, professors in conducting or uh, conductors or really good soloists. And he, ch he has chosen the, uh, Debussy La Mer. And I said, it's a very brave uh, choice. Um, are you sure? Yes, he is sure. He wants to. Okay, so he conducted from memory another concerto from memory and an overture from memory and a new piece which is composed for the class for this occasion for orchestra. This is the normal way to have a, a diploma in, in the Paris Conservatoire. It was okay. I can tell you, he was better than a lot of conductors what you, who can, whom you can uh, watch on the television or, or, or on the net. But he didn't get a diploma. You understand? There was no problem, absolutely no problem. The orchestra played well. This was WC, you could recognize it. Everything was good, but he didn't get the diploma. And do you know why? Because in four, four years, I had maximum nine students in four years. But I, I insisted to have only six in four years. Because I said, if someone comes here to Paris Conservatoire and comes through on this very difficult uh, choosing system, you know, it's, it's, it's a nightmare to get in the, into the school. And you waste here four years and you don't get a job after that, this is the most sad story, what you can do. But it's a different system, not that system that uh, someone pays in a year, 15,000 or $20,000 plus, plus, plus. What could happen in the USA if someone pays for, for four years or five years annually, 25,000 bucks and, and doesn't get a diploma? I think he, he, he would uh, be crazy and the family would be, would be crazy. It's a different system. We cannot compare it, I think. It's very hard. I don't know, uh, uh, do you want to say something to this or? Yeah, yes, I do. Uh, um, okay, so I understand that the system is different in Europe than here in the United States, but- uh, no, Sorry, uh, not, in, not in Europe, not in Europe. In Paris is different, and in Budapest is different. Uh, I have taught in, in Switzerland, in, in Germany, in Japan, everywhere. It's a completely different system. Okay, but regardless of that, you know, putting that aside uh, with regards to the economics and the number of students, uh, if we're going to just talk about purely the educational system, the, the education of the of the students, isn't it? You know, money and all of the degrees aside, and the diploma aside, I mean. Isn't it that when somebody comes to you and say, I need guidance, uh, I want to learn how to do this thing. Uh, that is my question is how do we provide the guidance and the education to these students who are coming to us regardless, you know, let's put aside all of the systems of education. Yes. My first question is, what is your goal? What do you would like to, to teach do? the students how to do things? Yes, but just a moment before learn. before he comes. Before he comes, I, my first question is, what is your goal with this? If, if he says he would like to be a famous conductor, I say probably don't try it, you know. But if 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 you would like to be a teacher, okay, on this level, we I can teach you something. I am very positive, so I would like to teach on that level. Where is the 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 student? Please. 
and that oh. that is my question is to, to just purely educate the student no matter what whether they become a famous conductor or they become you know a, a rock star conductor is besides the point but you know to teach them what they want to learn is the goal um yes as i told you <laughs> um, Yes. Yes. Uh, Laszlo, you have a quick uh, comment to make. Then we have to move yes, on. Yes. 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 I, I know both sides very well, and I know that none of you know the other side. <laughs> the the way uh, I do. I try to be practical. So the the, the to answer uh, for the the, the question uh, from uh, Lino is that uh, you are right. Uh, my professor was very strong when said, "Go home and find it out." We have to help them how to read a score because in generally there is a flutist or a singer or a cellist who plays one line and suddenly there are 35 lines front of them and they, they, they can't even see what is there so we have to help them first to find out what kind of music is that tonal music or atonal music what is the texture what kind of melodies we have who plays what what is the form of the piece after we find out that it's tonal or atonal? What is the form? Within the form, it's monophonic, homophonic, polyphonic, heterophonic. What kind of music is that? And after to the uh, analyze totally the material and add the instruments to the, uh, the texture of the music. And after they can listen to a recording because they will know what to listen for so they can learn it better and they will tell that you are the best professor because you help them to understand what is in the score okay so let's uh, watch another video this of laszlo conducting the u university of central florida symphony mahler Fantastic. So, Laszlo, tell us, how did you get from Budapest to Orlando? Well, the, you know, I always sitting between open doors, and wherever the wind is blowing from, I'm going to the, the direction blown by the wind. This happened when, when, when those army story where finally I was in the music director of all army orchestras and bands in Hungary. They, 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 they the political change stopped the position and they said you can do whatever you want bye bye good so what should i do and i started to work with the strauss symphony orchestra as an assistant conductor of my former composition and orchestration professor mr bogar 
We worked together, we went to Paris, we went to Switzerland, we had concerts in the playa, concert for I did the ballets, he did the show. After an operator theater, I conducted and I established the band in the Liszt Academy. And Jim Croft came from, from, from Florida, where there was a Hungarian pianist, Kileni, who uh, was a wonderful representative of the Listian school, because uh, Dochnani was the second Liszt called in Hungary, who uh, immigrated to Tallahassee, Florida, at the end of his life. This is when he's buried in the cemetery. And Kileni was a Dochnani student. So basically, Kileni is a Liszt grandson, uh, if you see, and he was there, the, the, the piano professor. So the Hungarians had a good name and Jim Kropp uh, from uh, Tallahassee said, Lancelo, uh, why don't you come to uh, Tallahassee? I see that you might have better future in the States. Come there and help to elevate the level of music education in America. And in Hungary, you don't have a doctor degree for mu just musicologists, no performance, no educators. I didn't speak English one word. Um, my, my German, my Russian uh, was much better. I studied a little French too. Uh, uh, je prends l'autobus. This was the first French lesson that I learned. <laughs> and uh, and uh, after I came here, I said, okay, let's learn English and let's, uh, let's uh, learn how it is all uh, here. And when I finished here, I got two job offers, one from Cornell, Cornell offered me the band conducting job and Orlando, uh, I was offered by the orchestra conducting job. While I was in Cornell in New York State, it was minus 35 all the three days while I was there. And, and, and in Orlando, in the same uh, next week, <laughs> it was already ages. So I was thinking that I need too many clothes warm clothes in, in New York State. Plus, I saw that all the cars, they have a jump cable, because if you go to work, by the time you finish with your glasses, you won't go home because your battery will be dead from the cold. So you need to hunt for somebody to help you to start your car. So I thought even a Hungarian physics professor was telling me, Leslie, it's not a bad place here in Cornell, please. And they offered $12,000 more but I choose the orchestra and, and, and the better weather in, in Orlando. And when I came, there was nothing. There was no orchestra, but 12 people. And you saw on the mile, there was 120 on the stage that I could attract and put together for Congratulations, them. fantastic. Ground zero. They couldn't play, uh, even the violins, they couldn't play a G major scale. Not in tune at all. They were looking for the notes. So, uh, it, it was a very, very challenging job. Congratulations. Fantastic. Let's take a look now at Jolt's video conducting the music of Peter. <laughs>
So, Jean, tell us now, when you conduct, it doesn't look like Laszlo. Laszlo looks like um, like most like other clown. conductors I've seen. When when you conduct, it's a, a different. I mean, tell us about this music, uh, with Peter Utvush, this collaboration with this Hungarian composer, and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, a little more about you as a conductor. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, only how can I say it? Lotsi, uh, Kuzip Sabi, what is it in English? Uh, mediocre. Only mediocre conductors conduct the same. Sorry to say this. Uh, um, uh, if someone doesn't have a, a, a personality, then um, it's a problem. <laughs> Let's say it like this. So uh, we had, first of all, two different uh, professors in the academy, and then I worked very close to Peter Rutvers, together with him, and I was also, uh, I became uh, assistant for him for almost six years. Um, what was the question, in fact? <laughs> question was, uh, tell us about this. Uh, are you considered a, a contemporary music specialist? This music that we've heard, Bartok, and this I, music? I, I, this I what, would what be happy if I, if I uh, would be a specialist for the music. Uh, my nature is uh, so that I'm interested for, for today and for the, for the future more than for the past. And just know it, it looks so that I, uh, I conduct only, only the modern music or 20th century music is not true. The problem is that I couldn't show you uh, other recordings. We, I have many uh, things from, uh, I don't know, Brahms, uh, Debussy, I don't know, uh, Mendelssohn. Uh, a lot of recordings, but the problem is the copyright. I cannot show them because it's uh, with famous orchestras and the copyright is not by me. So um, I do everything, in fact, from Bach until today. I don't feel myself as a, as a specialist. However, uh, I was invited very often because uh, general music directors don't like to do new music because it's it's uh, risky, first of all, and uh, they have to waste time for it, a lot of time. And during this time, it's possible to, to, to conduct 20 times the Beethoven pips. It's easier. Okay, under, it's understood. easier life. <laughs> let's, let's, take a look at, let's take a look at Laszlo. He's also yeah, just a, Just a moment. Just a moment. May I ask yes. something? Of course. I see that you are in stress that we will not finish the show. <laughs> I, I can see it on your face. Uh, is this uh, uh, written somewhere that it has to be one hour or? Uh, uh, yes, unfortunately, we can only be one hour. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Okay. Forget the question. Okay. Uh, excellent. So we watch a video of now Laszlo Maroshi, who is conducting contemporary music. Okay, Laszlo, so, so tell us, so this is more about you conducting a little bit of everything? Yes, I do everything. I'm not vegetarian. I eat everything, I conduct everything. Doesn't matter, Renaissance, Josquin de Tre, I just love it. I always look for something that talks to me and, and, and you can find it every kind of music that is good music. It can be the Gregorian chant, it can be a contemporary, uh, the atonal uh, the piece that based on the new harmonic combinations 
that starts uh, above the overtone number seven, uh, because there are new musical harmonic vocabularies built up from combinations when they are the interval smaller than a minor second. And I just read the, the, the Mr. Dubrova, he wrote a big book about that. And, and I am okay with that too. He has a big piece called Psychographics. I recorded it in the Hungarian radio. And, and he says this is the most modern uh, music that anyone ever heard because it's even not dodecophone music, it's even more challenging because they are micro intervals and all those all combinations, how will you hear them if your ear is trained only for the traditional atonal and tonal music. So I do everything which makes sense, I love everything, but, uh, but I still have a heart and I still love the beautiful feelings It can be sad, it can be happy, but you know what makes music interesting contrasts slow fast loud the uh, uh, soft uh, rapid what what whatever the uh, strings brass uh, uh, lots of the uh, contrasts and and vocal music instrumental music renaissance music contemporary music i love i love those all because these are all human we born and we die they are the big contrasts so whatever contrast I found music, I say this is a very important human feature in the music. So we have to do it expressively because what is music? Expressively organized, human-made sound combinations. And I always go back to that sentence. This sentence helps me to make any kind of music expressive. So those who play it, those who composed it, those who listen to it, they will say that I gave them something. Okay, let's watch another video of Lazo conducting Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto. Great, fantastic. So very good violin. Then uh, the last question that we have, uh, of course, is the most difficult for Jolt. What's important to you when you conduct? The composition. One word. The score. What does that mean exactly? <laughs> That's the minimum that we manage the score and when you manage the score then, then you are free in the sense of uh, Stefan Georg uh, who said that um, the highest freedom is the absolute precision should I repeat okay. it okay and so the and highest get... freedom is the absolute precision 
Die größte Freiheit ist die absolute Pünktlichkeit. Okay. Okay, my, I think my, my job is uh, to... Christoph von Dochnani was asked one time that how do you conduct uh, uh, Bach? And he said, I would like to conduct Bach, Bach on the way that if Bach would leave today, he would like it. I would like to, to have the same, not because of, <laughs> because of Christoph von Dochnani, but, uh, but this is my point that I try to go behind of the score and to find uh, out the original uh, idea, why, what about is this music and what I would like to say with this music, why I would like to show it and okay. to play this music. Laszlo, but in fact, the score, <laughs> the score. Laszlo, same question to you. Yeah, I could talk two hours about this question, but probably you wouldn't like that. So I will try to keep it very short. <laughs> And, and uh, I tried to do something with the notes. This is that my, my professor, who was the opera director in South Hungary in Page and, and the music director of the uh, Page Philharmonics, and also a regular guest conductor of the Radio Symphony, and also the, the conductor of the Hungarian Radio's Wind Ensemble, Tomasz Breitner, he told me when he gave me the conducting certificate. If I will be dead and I will hear that you are not doing something with the notes, you just play the notes without any human engagement, I will come back and I will kick your uh, B-U-T-T. And, uh, and, uh, and you know what? Uh, I, I like that. I always try to do something. Uh, and and uh, I learned that people like that. Musicians like that, audience like that, when something happening on the stage, when they will get an experience and they can go home with something like people after the Greek drama. They went to listen to the Greek drama because they got an experience and they learned what is the difference between the bad and the good in a new relation, what they heard on that day. And I like that very much to do with the concerts too. So people will go home and they will remember what happened there. They liked it, they were happy, there was something sad, there was something nice, something fast, something this, but some musical experience they will bring them home that will make their lives better because music makes people better. Wow. What okay, and do you know what, what told me your professor in my first year by, by exam? He told me, my beautiful colleague, don't listen to recordings, listen to the score. Your professor told me this. Don't listen to recordings because he recognized that I listened to one recording very much and I conducted it like someone, you know? And he was <laughs> even telling you whose recordings you were listening to. Yes. So um, before we uh, end with our last music, uh, I would like to show a surprise that Jolt has prepared, especially for Laszlo on this occasion, which is this photo. Jolt, can you tell us a little bit about it? This is the Lorelei. This is the Lorelei. Today I was there and I shot this photo this, this after this morning, 11 something, because of the next music. Okay. So here we are, and here is our next music conducted again by Laszlo Maroshi.
Wonderful. So how can we stay in touch with Jolt? Let's take a look right now at his website. It is joltnagia.de. There it is, and there is his schedule that comes up right away. Oh, it's not up to date at all in the last, I don't know, 10 years. I didn't write too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we can contact you, Jolt. They're under the contact. Yes. It's Jolt, Nagy Jolt at global, globalserve.de. And I'll put that in the chat room right now. Okay. So okay. that is in the chat room. If I can click there, there it is. And let's see how we can stay in touch with Laszlo Maroshi. There it is, laszlomaroshi.com. And we have all information about him. And there is his email address right there, maroshi80 at hotmail.com. And people can just reach out to you that way, Laszlo? Absolutely. Wonderful. OK. So I will put that right now in the chat room. There it is, lazlomaroshi.com. So thank you very, very, very much to our guests, Jolt, Nagya, and Laszlo thank you. Maroshi. Thank you to be here. Thank, thank you. you for inviting. For your interest. So let's take a look at next week's show. We have coming up on next Wednesday, Miguel del Aguila, Elegant and Affectionate Music. If contemporary classical music isn't usually considered quote unquote elegant, then it surely is never considered quote unquote affectionate. How then did Miguel del Aguila, a Vienna trained composer, find the path that led his music to be received by the New York Times as both elegant and affectionate, as well as to be nominated for three Grammy Awards? Come welcome Miguel to our show and get ready for a new take on musical modernity. As always, all information about upcoming shows may be found at www.simeonmoro.com. So once again, thank you so very much to Jolt Nagye. Thank you to Lazo Maroshi. Thanks thank you very much. For the invitation. Thanks very much to Professor Lino Rivera of St. Mary's College of California. Thank you to Agnieszka Rivole for her support of this show. And most of all, thanks to you, our participants who make it all worthwhile. From Vienna, Austria, from Karlsruhe, Germany, from Orlando, Florida, and from the Bay Area, California, goodbye, and see you next week. Congratulations, Simon.